Burrs. He is a pediatrician and an internist over in Greenville. So he did his intern uh, or his residency at GHS. So he has how many how many international trips have you? Well, three countries: Clemson. I met Clemson. That's one of the countries. Foreign, but, uh, one of the foreign countries. Foreign Clemson, yeah. yeah. Kenya, Honduras, and Brazil. But okay. lots of trips. So okay. Sure. And multiple trips Clemson, to those Clemson. areas. And he's Under, already uh, uh, planning on taking uh, another trip sure. here soon. So he's got some into, uh, some slides here. Sure. Going to show us. So we're happy to have him with us tonight, and I'm, I'm trying to, to prod him a little bit to, to maybe get through the presentation as quickly as possible so he can give, give you time to ask some questions. So, uh, um, for those of you guys trickling in, there is a sign-up sheet. Make sure you guys sign in. If you're not an AD, I'll still give you points for using for awards, scholarships, elections, all that stuff. If you guys are in the Bass I-496, please make sure you sign in so I know that you're here and I don't send you an email later. Um, so give, give me an idea of who we're um, talking to tonight. How many people are pre-med? So almost everybody is there. And then I guess there's a couple of free dental people. Okay. Some more um, And then how many of y'all have done international trips before? So, were any of y'all at that lecture that I gave a week or so ago? Okay, that, that's good. I was worried about that. I think this is a good place to start. I only made um, 25, 26 copies. I have no idea how big this crowd is. But um, my first question would be, um, how many of you were called to be a physician? I use the word physician loosely because I know a thing that some of y'all are thinking of doing dental. That was a surprise to me tonight. I didn't know that was part of AAD. But um, so how many people in the room would think you're called to do medicine or dentistry for that matter? A couple people? Everybody? That's good. Well, let's pass this out. This is written by Albert Schweitzer. Um, and I'll separate it out and we'll just go through. I tried to change it up a little bit because I was afraid some of the same people would be there. Um, while I'm talking, um, because I you know some of you have to run away, um, I've brought in some international books. I talk, I've, uh, what I find whenever I give this lecture is that nobody has a chance to look at them. So what I'd like to do is just pass them around and um, if you don't look at it, just pass it to the next person. Um, but let me tell you about them first. This is a book um, written by Tracy Kidder um, about Paul Farmer. And I know that if you're going on a Costa Rica trip, this will be required to me. Um, it's a pretty good book. Some people have told me it's boring in, in the group. I don't know if they do. But uh, no, it's actually a, a, pretty, a pretty interesting book. Um, this guy, when he was a pre-medical student, probably even when he was a high school student, started doing international work. And uh, by the time he was pre-medical, um, this was years ago, he was doing a lot of medical things um, on his own, um, basically being a doctor. Um, and that's not recommended anymore. The ethics of that have been brought into question. Dr. Smith and I have talked about that before, and we all won't be doing that, I hope. But um, what he would do is when he was in medical school um, in college, he would fly down to Haney on his weekends and run a clinic, which I think is pretty cool. And uh, a lot of it, he didn't actually attend classes um, in medical school. He did a lot of his studying on the plane or while he was actually in Haiti. Um, so he really has a heart for international medicine and, in fact, is one of the main names to know. Um, I don't know if we ran out of coffee or not. Um, so that's a good book to read. Make, make, sure, you, make sure you read it. Um, this is an atlas that I recently got. It's an atlas of pediatrics. And so while we're talking, if you want to just look at the pictures, it's a lot of fun pictures in here. Diseases that I, I have not even heard of. I've been through the whole medical school and residency and everything, and my intent is to go through and learn those diseases. But it's just fun to look at. <coughs> this is a, a general book right here just about how you work in international child health. Um, one of the themes of, of the talk, anytime you're at, give an international talk, is that the people most affected by um, the disparities that we see in the world, poverty and, and, and such, disease, is usually children first, women next, and then eventually the men get affected. But it's children and women that get affected most of all. So if you're going to be a pediatrician and do work along these lines, then um, you can make a big difference. Um, 
you can all just pass these around, next person, whatever. This is a good book, and um, this is kind of like the history of international medicine. I haven't read it yet, um, but it's, what's neat about it is that they've got um, uh, different people like Paul Farmer, like Albert Schweitzer, who wrote this, that um, are, um, they, he spends a whole chapter telling you about him, so you can actually learn people that have gone before you and things that they've done. And he wrote a, a companion book to this, which I don't own, um, Shook at Library, that is neat. It's kind of an atlas. And what it does is, um, one of the questions people often have for me is, um, well, I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a Muslim, and I'm really interested in working in, in, in international health, but I don't know where to go. What, where, what are some Muslim organizations that are doing that? And so you can go to his book and look under religion um, and, and find or organizations that are actually the best specific organization. Or I'm a Christian, or I'm a Jew. Or and maybe you don't really have a religious affiliation, but you really want to work in um, beliefs. I was talking to somebody earlier about beliefs. And so he'll tell you what organizations are working in beliefs. And so you can go in there. So it's a neat, he's a neat author to write down if you're interested in doing some um, reading in the, along those ends. This is a great book to have. This is um, kind of the nuts and bolts of working in a developing country. And so when we don't have all our fancy technology and whatnot here um, in, in the States, what do you do? If we don't have a fluoroquinolone, um, which is a pretty broad spectrum antibiotic, um, to treat bugs. If you don't have a fluoroquinolone, what, what do you do? What do you use as your second line of defense? And so this is a neat book to, to look through. Um, finally, I just found this book. Um, uh, last week or a week or two ago and, and ordered my own and somebody let me borrow it. And this is a book for you, Dr. Smith. Um, I, I can't give it to you, but I want you, want you to read it. Um, this, this is a neat book. This is written by people who've done a lot of medical um, mission type stuff. It is religious. Um, but what's neat about it is if you're leading a trip or you're involved in planning a trip, it tells you <coughs> what to do, all the stuff to look out for. Um, and so I would highly recommend it. Um, as long as um, it it's, has a strong religious bent. But um, for instance, I was on the phone on the way up here. Um, somebody called me, um, one of the doctors going with me to Brazil in 18 days. I don't know why she waited until 18 days before the trip to make this phone call. She's real worried about malpractice. She says, are you going to buy tail, uh, malpractice coverage while you're over there in Brazil? What happens if somebody sues us? And so that's a good question. Um, something I never thought about when I was a medical student or a resident until I got my own license, and now people can take my license away. Um, and you gotta protect that. And so she started asking all these questions, what do I do, what do I do? Well, he answers that question in this book. Um, and then what, how do you plan? What are the documents that you bring? What are the things you put in your medical kit? Um, how do you prepare your team for cultural sensitivity? So he has little chapters, usually four or five page chapters, on each of the subjects, which I think is really great. Um, but it, like I said, it's very, um, it's written by a Christian author, and so he doesn't hesitate to, um, to talk about his beliefs. So these are, we're, we'll talk about these maybe if we have time. This is a room good, it's an African club. Um, and in Africa, they don't have guns. Guns are illegal unless you're a soldier. And so they find other ways to hurt one another. Um, we saw a lot of arrow injuries. Um, a lot of Runga injuries, which is basically, a, like I said, a club. And then we also saw a lot of Pongo injuries, which were machetes. So people came in with that. And then there's a stone that the people in Kenya will fashion things out called PC stone. And it's a hard stone. And they made the most beautiful things. Um, and so these are, um, this is something we got on the way out of uh, the airplane. It looks like the ear got broken, but anyways. Um, and lastly, you know, I brought in a, uh, um, I reread this today just to get my, myself um, prepped for, for the talk. Mother Teresa, anything she writes is great. Because I think if anybody understood poverty, it was her. And she always put it in the correct context. And I, I like what she says right here. And this is a chapter she, um, I think the book is called No Greater Love, but it's a chapter <coughs> on poverty. And uh, so it's her thoughts on poverty. And she says, it's too easy simply to talk or concern ourselves with the poor who are far away. It's much harder, perhaps more challenging, to turn our attention and concern toward the poor who live right next door to us. And so, um, so I, hopefully, if anything, this talk will spur you on to, to make a difference. So um, I'm going to fly through the slides and, in fact, skip over a lot of stuff just so I can answer your questions. But what really helps me is if you all interrupt me. And, um, and if you interrupt me and raise your hands and ask questions, because as Dr. Smith knows, I could probably talk for two hours and show you all my pictures and slides and all that, and I'm not going to do that. Um, and so I, I want to make sure that we address those questions as we're going through it. Um, but in order to, um, I just click down to do it. Mm -hmm. Okay, like this. Okay. Yeah. Um, but in order to 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 do international work, I 
suggests that you understand the disparities that exist out there. And this is a quote by Martin Luther King I always like to start with because it's actually in front of that book, Awakening Hippocrates. And it says, the racial problem in America will be solved to the degree that every American considers himself personally confronted with it. And you know, he made a difference um, with racial disparities. So um, my goal, if anything tonight, is to confront you with the disparities that exist in the world internationally. So a child is every three seconds of AIDS and extreme poverty. When you do the math, that equals out to be 30,000 kids dying a day. And that, that's a lot. You think about this day that just progressed. Um, and none of, none of us went hungry or missed a meal, um, at least on purpose. Um, so anyways, um, so half the kids in the world live in extreme poverty. This tells you the things, the, the forces, um, sh lack of shelter, lack of water, lack of health care. They don't have to read them and read to you. I always like this slide because um, um, I love my dog, but um, it basically says that we have the money to take care of people. This is how much it would be to provide basic health care and safe water, but we spend just as much money on pet food in America and Europe alone. Um, there's enough food available. When the, uh, the Department of Agriculture calculates it out, the food's out there. It's not a, there's a little poem that I thought about bringing you all, but it basically says stop eating all the cookies, because the cookies are, are out there. It's just that um, people aren't, the food is not distributed evenly. Um, the life expectancy is about half of what it is in the developing world. Um, two big things you'll find out about, those of you that have read um, the, uh, the mountains, both mountains, beyond mountains, Paul Farmer talks a lot about um, malaria, and he talks a lot about tuberculosis. And those are two things that we don't see in the United States unless people come back and bring these back to us. But if you're going to be in international medicine, and you're going to be making a difference in it like Paul Farmer, you need to understand and be on the forefront of these two disease processes. Um, this one always shakes me. Um, and I'll show you all some pictures in Kenya, given the opportunity, given the time. But um, there's 1.8 million deaths related to diarrhea. And it particularly affects the little kids because they don't have much um, body surface area. And 90% of these occur under the age of five. Um, we're not going to talk about these just because of time. These are all the books. <laughs> I have, I, I can give you all these slides or put them online, but what I would recommend you do, I wish I had gotten this talk when I was um, in college. And because I think a lot of us have ideas, well, I'm going to go to Belize, um, or I'm going to go to Costa Rica. Um, but we really don't know what's being done out there. And there's a lot of organizations doing a lot of good. And so you can align yourself with those organizations. And these are some, some things, some organizations um, that are doing a lot of good out there. And you can make yourself really um, smart on this. You don't have to go any farther than your computer. Um, so anyways, any questions about that? That was quick, but I want to get to, um, let's see, to the meat of it. For those of you that are interested, we will put his PowerPoint on the website, so you can have that information later. So no questions? Um, so y'all were aware of those 30,000 kids tonight, and y'all had already been confronted with that personally. Yes? No? Okay. Um, so I went to Kenya as a fourth-year medical student. Um, it was a good experience, and it was a bad experience. And hopefully, um, when Dr. Smith takes y'all to Costa Rica, you'll come back and say it was a good experience. Um, but one of the things that they were doing, and this is an ethical question that, that comes up, is should people like Paul Farmer be, be being doctors when they aren't even a doctor yet? Um, and the, you know, the question is definitely no. And so in Kenya, um, I, I was uh, set loose, and they, they called me uh, Dr. Bird well before I had my medical license or even had completed residency. And so I was resuscitating kids, making decisions upon which kids had the, the oxygen or not, which kids lived or died. Um, sometimes in the wards, we'd walk in, and in the same day, I'd resuscitate a baby. That I can't remember whether they lived or not. And then I'd, we'd go to the under two ward of that kid, and then we'd go and do a teenager. And so we're doing CPR and all these different. CPR changes depending on, and you all know this from your basic life life support courses. Um, so it was it, it was uh, rattling, to say the least. I've never been depressed. Um, my wife would tell you I'm actually a pretty happy-go-lucky guy, except for when I was in Kenya. Because every day, you walk into the wards, and you say, well, where did patient so-and-so go? I ordered oxygen on last night. Oh, they're dead. And then they would just go to the next patient. So the bed would be empty the next day. 
Now, that's a daily occurrence. If today, at this hostel in Timwick, a few people will die every day. I always try to remind myself of that um, to not get too comfortable.